Crawford is a former lightweight kickboxing champ who just returned from a promotional match in Japan. Dennis is now a middleweight who owns the West Coast Karate Club where he also instructs. Now here's Dennis. Hello, my name is Greg Rousseau and today we're talking to Dennis Crawford. Dennis was the former Canadian uh, kickboxing lightweight champion and also the owner instructor of West Coast uh, Karate Club. Hi, Hello, Greg. Nice. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Not bad. Not bad. Good. Um, could you maybe give us a bit of background on uh, how you originally got into karate and what was the interest that, uh, that you had? Um, sure. I started after I seen a Bruce Lee movie back in 73. Okay. Um, I was very excited about it and stuff and I seen all the high flashy kicks and I figured it was something I'd like to get into. I played a lot of junior hockey. I played junior hockey until I was 21 and uh, I was getting about 21 by the time I started and I figured oh, time to get into something else and I enjoy and I seen the flick and I thought that was something I really enjoy. I started at a place called Tracy's Karate School actually. Um, when you're fly by night types places, but how do you know when you're that young, right? You know, started there you, and was it more? Was it? Did you want to learn how to fight so that you could defend yourself, or was it more the flamboyancy of the, of the karate, or? Yeah, I liked. I, I wanted. To, I wanted to do the things that Bruce Lee did. I'm sure every young guy was the same way, and I. I wanted to do some high flashy kicks, and after I. I never thought I would get as far as I did, or or, be into it as long as I did, which has been, 14, 15 years now, long time. Uh, it was just a thrill for me to start it out there and stuff. Yeah. Um, how long you you fought amateur for quite a while? What was your training like until you decided to start fighting amateur? Not as not as extensive as um, when I I'd be running like you fight three minute rounds of course as an amateur. So I'd be training as a three minute round fight would go like uh, you would run three rounds you would go three to six rounds on the bag um, spar three to six rounds. Um, with hands and feet as kickboxing. I boxed amateur as well, and I had 12 amateur boxing fights, so that helped as well, okay? Um, was cut, that what yeah. gave you the, you know, your, um, how well you did at the amateur fighting, is that what gave you the initiative to, to get into it professionally? Um, yeah, uh, that definitely was the initiative, <laughs> is, is the amateur fighting that uh, wanted me to get into, that, that made me get into the full contact fighting. Um, there were promoters coming up at that time from LA that uh, that wanted to pr promote us as full contact fighters and actually wanted to get us and the Raiders to make in the rating excuse me to uh, to make it more national more worldwide so they'd have somebody for the California fighters to come and beat up but what happened <laughs> yeah really what happened is it worked the other way around we give them a bit of a beating so uh, we got some world ratings out of that so you got established as a got as established a as a full contact fighter and mm. uh, got trips out of it um, went to Hong Kong numerous times and um, and uh, Japan numerous times, uh, all around North America, basically to fight the full contact karate. Um, there's a lot of different styles of karate, um, kung fu, um, jujitsu, all these various mm. things. What's the style that? Uh, is there a certain reason you picked uh, your style, or? Um, it actually uh, the reason I picked the style because it happened to be the happened to be the style that was in the neighborhood. <laughs> you know, basically it's you, when you're it, just first getting involved, you don't know, so you just get in and and uh, hope you're gonna like Once it. Once you learn a little more about it then you have an idea what you want to do. Mm, yeah, um, the people that I were training with, it's very important uh, to have an instructor uh, that is a good instructor and that, that's attentive and wants to want you to learn instead of interested in, in just making a buck. I remember when I trained at karate, uh, Tracy's Karate School, it was $45 a month. That was 13 years ago. Okay, most clubs today are that price. You know, so that was a lot of money back. That then. was a lot of money, and then they charge you per belts. You know, some clubs yeah. are um, to run a business. You have to do that though to keep the doors open uh, in that day and age and this day and age. Yeah, excellent. Um, kickboxing. You started out in karate, mm -hmm. and you eventually went over into kickboxing. Mm -hmm. Where did that happen? What was the um, that just naturally comes with the with the full contact? Yeah, well, I trained I, I trained the karate first, and then. Um, what you do, then I boxed amateur, I had the 12 amateur boxing fights, and what full contact karate is, or kickboxing, it's, it's westernized boxing technique and karate kicks combined, okay, fought in a ring, as um, a professional boxer would do, or an amateur boxer would do, but with kicks as well, okay, um, after you. <laughs> um, with the fighting, with, with the amateur fighting, with the professional fighting, 
Um, how do you feel when you go in there? Is it is it is it total concentration? Is it uh, is is there a lot of con camaraderie respect between the fighters? Uh, mm -hmm. um, there really is. Uh, I just recently. Um, I haven't fought for five years, and I just recently took a fight in Japan December 5th. Um, and uh, I trained three weeks for the fight and hadn't fought for five years. When I used to fight uh, before, uh, I fought it for different reasons. Now I did it for enjoyment and uh, for the money, <laughs> basically, in the trip. We had four days later uh, after we were there to enjoy ourselves and have a good time. Um, as, of the, as the camaraderie goes, um, after the fight, it was a good fight. I didn't win the fight, but it was very good, as hopefully we'll be able to show you some highlights. Um, after the fight, uh, me and Caesar Takashi, uh, um, we went out, we were, we were walking in the street arm in arm with a Korean beer in our hand, having a good time, you know. Relaxing, and being buddies, yeah. Yeah, we're buddies after that because um, there's no egos. Uh, as the two fighters go, uh, people from the outside can see egos from the outside in. But as two fighters go, like they're fighters and they know what it takes to get You're in doing there. Doing the best they can, and uh, you do the best you can. You both realize and, uh, that, I guess. And you realize that in the long run, you really do. And um, people, uh, a lot of people look at fighting as violence, right? We look at it as a sport, and it really is. Um, they like to. The, I can. I've seen people say, "Well, that's really violent what you do and stuff," but. Um, if there's a violent part of it all, it's the people that come and watch. They're the people that are aggressive, not the people that are fighting. They're controlled in the ring. Yeah. The yeah. fighters are just sport to them. Okay, and the people that are watching, if they're, if they're people that are aggressive or stuff, they're coming to watch you fight. Okay, the people that are non-athletic types, and they're getting excited over watching you fight. Okay. Yeah, they get all aggressive. And yeah, get in sure. there and hit them. And yeah, get in there and hit them. So. Um, after you gained this, uh, the Canadian, the Canadian Championship, kickboxing championship, uh, you retired. You've been retired for five years now. Mm -hmm. um, what was the reasoning for your retiring? Was there you just you'd gone as far as you wanted to go, or? Yeah, basically, uh, I was getting a little older, and uh, I had other interests in mind, um, and uh, I thought. At the time, that was as much as I really wanted to do. I didn't really want to go any farther in the sport. Uh, I had um, a karate club going at that time, um, and I was I was fo or focusing on that. And at the same time, working as a doorman in the bar, not a bouncer, a doorman. The only time you're a bouncer is when you do this. Okay. <laughs> How's the karate club going for you? Good. Is club for, uh, good. For I just started, years now. Yeah, just started it in January. Like I was telling you before, I had it going for a couple years or a couple years prior. And uh, I lost interest, got into something else, and I've just started it again in January, and it's going really good. Do you have a really big workload, or? Um, I've got 14 students. 14 students. 14 students right now, uh, which in six weeks is is really good. Um, I teach full contact karate as a self defense. Okay, as is what I is what I fought before as full so contact it's karate. Not, it's not so much the theory. You're also teaching these people how to how to defend themselves in actual situations. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's one thing that happens to you. Um, that doesn't happen to you um, in the gym, okay? It's called fear, okay? When you're out in the street, you're, I mean, you're scared, you know? You're scared what's going to go on. You know, and the harder you train, you know, the luckier you're going to be, okay, when it comes to a situation, and the more confidence you're going to have when it gets to a fighting situation in the ring. It really is, you know? And uh, that's why I suggest anybody, you know, to get into some form of self-defense, especially for today's living, you know? It's really yeah. important. And, uh, hmm. Does it seem that people build a lot more confidence when they when they learn a martial art? It seems, <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, they, they, do you think that maybe sometimes that establish overconfidence, or do you teach them confidence? Yeah, yeah. You try to teach them that I've they got a, I've got they, a whale. They know that mm -hmm. you know. Don't go out there and try and beat up a bike gang because you're not going to win. Yeah, I've got you a know? way to deal with cockiness. Okay, among my students. Okay, I really feel uh, students portray their instructor. Okay, uh, if you're um, if your instructor is a bleep, you know, then uh, that's the way your students are too. They act the same way. If, you're, if your instructor is a sensible, good guy and explains things properly, then they portray them. That's the way they're going to learn it. Sure. Excellent. You know, and uh, they're not going to go out and get in a, a situation. And my way, as I was going to say, is my way to deal with them is if they get a little bit of line, I get them, get them in the ring and give them a bit of a beat and, you know, you know. So or, they, they know they're so not. They, so they know exactly what's going on. They know they're not so tough, you know, because there's no such thing as being tough. Tough is a situation, you know, it really is. Tough is the situation that you're involved in. Okay, Dennis, you just fought a match in Japan. Uh, I believe it was called a shoot match. Um, tell me a little bit about that. How did that, oh, how did yeah, that come up in your, little, your little situation? A little bit different than, uh, than kickboxing. Okay, kickboxing, as you all know, is a very, uh, very aggressive 
very violent sport. Okay, this takes kickboxing to a new high. Okay, it's called shoot boxing. And what a shoot is, a shoot is a throw in Japanese. Okay, and their matches, they fight three five-minute rounds, and they're allowed to throw. Okay, a throw isn't an actual judo-type throw where you think the person would put you in a, a position and throw you really nice and neatly. Um, they're basically trying to grab you and you know and fall on you so you land on your melon and hurt yourself, <laughs> basically, <laughs> you know. But um, so there are a few more holds and stuff in there. Yeah, you got the holds going, and um, and they use knees as well to the knees. body. Yeah, and they're allowed to grab. What what they do is they grab you the back of your head and they'll knee to your body while you're trying to punch them in the head, you know. And it's the same as kickboxing. The rest is anyways uh, where you use your hands and you use your kicks. In the, in the same um, aspect. So I guess even though you, you've done a lot of kickboxing, a lot of fighting in your time, um, this is totally new for you. So there's, you know, you're not going to be expecting it as much. It's not uh, second nature as much as the as the, the original yeah. kickboxing would be. Yeah. Um, it was a little bit different. Like I say, I took the I took the fight on a whim, you know, and uh, I trained three weeks for it, and um, you know, I was just interested in to see how I do. You know, I'm 29 years old now, and uh, just wanted to see how I would do, <laughs> and. Um, uh, I did very, very good. I haven't fought for five years, as we were talking before. Um, uh, the shoot boxing is a different sport. Five minute rounds is a long time. You know, a five minute round takes you a long time to finish. It seems like it's for years and years. Um, the people that we went over there with, uh, we went over on a, basically a Canadian tour. It was, it was Canada versus Japan. Uh, and I fought the main event. Uh, another fighter named Steve Ewall, okay, fought the semi main event and he won. He beat his fighter, and I've never seen a fighter so dirty in my life as that guy. He Excellent. Was, yeah. So it was a nice trip, and it was something a little new for you. Yeah, it was a it was a very good time, okay. and I enjoyed it. And I think I possibly this is up in the air. Don't tell nobody. I might be fighting the guy again in June. Okay, back Excellent. there, or something might be happening out here. Okay. Well, good for you. It was really nice talking to you, Dennis. Okay. Thank you very much, Greg. Thank you. And uh, I'm Greg, and thank you for joining us this evening. Thank you for watching another episode of Just People. And if you have any suggestions for us on uh, anybody in the White Rock Peninsula area that we might interview that might be of interest to this show, please give Just People at Shaw Cable 4 a call at 531-2929. And for Vince Germain, this is goodbye till next time. And Carol Macaretta, we'll see you then. <laughs>